Lids Pam with 44 Marketplace and Creative Finishes by Pam. And we are going to be working on the piece that we started last night. Um, been kind of a busy day. The uh, I don't know how many of you guys follow me, but the table and chairs that I started on last week um, or the week before, I don't really remember. It kind of runs together. Um, they were delivered today, and I'll put up pictures of that a little later so you can see it in her home. It turned out beautifully. Um, it was, it, she was very pleased and so was I. She has it in her home for Christmas. So I've got one more Christmas gift to finish and I'm done. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, I think there was a post in one of my groups today about not saying hello to people, just getting right to painting. And I gotta tell you, I'm Southern and I say hello and I, I really like it. Hey girl, your designer finishes tonight. And if you don't like it, watch it in replay and fast forward through it. Um, or just don't watch the videos. I mean, that, that's always a choice. But a lot of us take a lot of time trying to show everybody finishes. And we're going to run it our way. So, hey Michelle. Hey Donna. I did not, I, I didn't get a chance to even look at it till after it was gone. And I got to see the original post, but I didn't get to see the comments. So, thankfully, because I probably would have misbehaved. That's my norm. Okay, so I don't know if you guys remember, but this beautiful piece was white, which is very neutral for me. It's not my personality at all. Um, I, I like a lot more color, and I'm going to show you the top so you can see what we did last night with the top. We used the um, Voodoo Stain in Black Magic and Up in Smoke. I like to layer those. Hey, Amanda, thank you again. Hey, Alan. Um, that way you guys can see where we are with this. And I don't know if you remember, but we had a natural top as of yesterday. Hey, Ellen. Um, I actually, it kept talking to me last night after I finished the live video and I stayed here a little while longer and I'm going to show you guys what I did. I put a picture up of it so you can see it, but I want you to see it in person. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick you guys up and show you the, uh, top. I'm very pleased with how it came out. So there's our top. You guys can see it's nice and dark, but it does have the gray accents, which is what I was going for. Um, the lighting is not fabulous in here. It's fluorescent, but at least you can see. And she said that I had put a little bit too much makeup on her. So we uh, took some of it off and we dolled it. So this is the end that I worked on last night so that you guys can see. Hey, Nancy, um, so that you guys can see the direction that she kind of wants to go. She wants to have more of the white showing, which is kind of what I thought that um, she wanted last night. And we covered up a lot of it, but I do like the way it's coming through and some of the original black is coming through. And then we actually went back in with some coffee bean and some dark wax. So uh, we did a blend um, on the door before we started the distressing. So, I can't wait, Janet. Hey, Janet, if you get a chance, join my new group um, so that you can see what we're going to be, uh, some of the things. Hey, Lisa. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you how we got to this point because a lot of people were interested in to, I mean, this is more me. Um, I like something that looks lived in and, and everything like that. So, we're going to go over here and we're going to start. And if you guys have questions, hit me up. And um, if not, you're welcome to watch. Or maybe you want to kind of go somewhere where people don't speak to you. Because that's not a southern thing to me. I have to speak to people. So, all right. Now, what we're going to do is, on the other door, I actually did a bit of a blend. The name of the group is Creative Furniture Finishes, I think. Something like that. Hey, Sandy, your live was fantastic, by the way. I loved it, loved it, loved it. If you guys didn't see Sandy's live at 8 o'clock on the Dixie Bell paint page, you need to take a minute and zip right over there and watch the replay. Um, it's probably going to be more exciting than this, but I want you guys to see what we're going to do. So I don't know if you can tell from where you're watching, but this has a bunch of divots and stuff in it like that. So before we start the process of distressing and... So, and whatever you want to call it, distressing and aging and whatever. 
I want to do a blend over this because while I love the Savannah Mist and the fluff that I put on here because I did go back and put a little bit of fluff on it, um, I do want to have a little bit, you know, I got to have my stormy seas in there. So we're going to do a little bit to kind of darken these panels up a little bit before we start. That way we can have, um, I like to have different levels of color and distressing and I just want it to have lots of texture and, and a lot of features. So that's where we're headed with this. Um, you know I have to have my mister bottle. Love my paint pixie brush. Um, and we are gonna get started. And you know when I'm blending I like to have some water on my piece. I like to just kind of get it started. I want it in my crevices first and then we'll go from there. And I, you don't have to wet it to a crazy amount, but I do like to have water on here before I get started. And I know it looks like a big smeary mess, but I, this is how I do mine. Brandy is much more organized with hers, but we all do things differently, right? I appreciate everybody liking and sharing last night. It was great that so many people saw the video. I really appreciate it. Also, those of you who have signed up for boot camp, I opened up a July boot camp today. Um, I only have two spots left. I, so if you're interested in a July boot camp here in Georgia, please let me know because it may be gone before you get it. We only have two spots left. Okay, so this is kind of what we're gonna do here. I just want a little bit of the, the stormy seas on that spot. And I do want to put a little bit of the Savannah Mist back in there. And I'm still using the jar that I use for classes that has got paint around the lid of it. And I'm not used to that. I'm used to squirting it out. But this one ended up used for classes and it's been a mess ever since. And somebody asked me last night, what I'm doing. Typically, I don't mist before I put my brush into the uh, paint. I get my paint on my brush and then I mist. Uh, somebody asked that last night and that is how I do it. Now, is that right or wrong? I don't know. You guys know me. I don't follow rules. If, it was, if there was a rule, I would probably do the opposite. I got to be straight up honest with you. And I don't know why I'm like that. It's probably not a good habit, but if you're 50 years old and that's what you've been doing, odds are you're probably still going to keep doing it. I know I am. Okay, I wet it down. I go ahead and I get my stormy seas and I'm darkening my center panel because I just want it to have a little bit of variation from the body because the body is quite beautiful being Savannah Miss, but I think it needs a little something else. And like I say, this piece is going to be my showpiece for my pop-up shop in February. I had someone ask me if I was going to sell it. I may, but not before February. <laughs> the whole point of this is to have it for a pop-up shop. So, somebody had expressed some interest and I told them they are welcome to come by and look at it. But it's not going to be for sale until then. If they want to come in and pay for it, and pick it up after the pop-up shop, you're welcome to do that. But it is not going to be moving around anywhere until then. So you can see that this is just a quick little move around kind of thing. I'm gonna move you guys. I hope I don't make you sick. Sorry if I do. Okay, we're gonna move you over here so you can see our other little door. And you guys get to see my big, giant, messy space that I work in. I also think organization is way overrated too. So, if you're watching, you know who I'm talking about. I have friends who are super organized and I envy that, but that's not me, so. So who is ready for Christmas? Are you guys ready? I know 
know this is kind of boring, but this is part of doing it. And I think a lot of people don't realize that this is part of the whole process. You have to do the tedious things to get what you want. If you get too much color, don't stress about it. Let it dry a little and throw some other color over the top of it. It's, but I can tell you with me, I don't want it to be just alike. I want it to be, um, I want it to have a more organic feel. So I don't want all my panels to be alike because if they are, we're going to do them again. I don't, I don't like symmetry. There's no reason for symmetry. And I know some of you like that drippy look. That's not really my, my favorite either. Tell you what, some people that do it are true artists. LaDawn, she is fabulous with it. Some of her pieces she throws out. If you guys don't follow LaDawn's creations, you might want to check into it. I mean, they're amazeballs. Okay, so now what we've done is we have layered a little bit of color in the center of these. And yes, I know I got out of the lines. If you guys knew it, Donna, I am ready for boot camp too. That would be a good desk for a welcoming counter. Yep, it would be. Um, so I am going to kind of touch up under this lip just a little bit because I can't stand the white showing. Um, but I don't want to get it on my lip either. All right, so now we have added our color into our panels so that everybody can see we've added a little bit of color there. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to get my sanding sponge and we're going to distress some. But where we're going to start distressing is where we've already painted first. My base color, my base color on this piece, um, well, actually the piece was black and then someone had painted it white and I base coated it with Savannah Mist. And then in the insets, I have used, um, I, last night I put a little swirls of fluff on it in different places. And then tonight, all of this is Savannah Mist and Stormy Seas in these insets only. Everything else is what the Savannah Mist we put on last night. And then our top was done in Black Magic Voodoo Gel Stain and uh, Up in Smoke Voodoo Gel Stain. We layered it. And after you guys were gone, I did put another layer of each one because I knew I wanted it richer. And that's how we ended up. I put two layers on lightly so that we could get it. All right. So we're going to start distressing um, because I want you guys to see the features that this has. Oh, I forgot something. We didn't do the insets of the drawers. And I want them to have just a little smish of something. All right. So just that quick, we're done with that. Um, so now when I start distressing, I like to catch these sharp edges. Um, because I'm one of those that I don't like to distress where it wouldn't naturally distress. So I like to catch sharp edges because they would definitely distress. Um, and if they have rounded edges, I like to catch those some too. Because they, your, your recesses would not distress as much as your top raised edges would. So that's what you've got to be mindful of when you're distressing. Or when I'm distressing, that's what I like to do. And you just kind of go from there. Um, distress as much or as little as you like. I'm one of those that this piece, because of the rustic nature of its design, it needs a little bit more distressing. And you can see in some places, I'm going to go, sorry, in some places we're going to go all the way through to the black that this piece started out with, but we're not going to do it on all of it. Because then it looks too symmetrical. And I don't know if you guys use these sanding sponges, but the two-sided sanding sponges are great for distressing because you can have one side that just takes a little bit of paint off and another side that takes a lot of paint off. So it's totally up to you as to what you want. And when I do the drawers and stuff, I like to make sure that the, the top edges really get a little bit because where you open and shut drawers, they would definitely distress more so than some of the other places. And if you 
wet distress, it'll distress faster and it takes less effort. So that's something to keep in mind. I want to control it. You can use a mechanical stander. How do I choose the combination of colors? You're going to laugh, but um, I choose the combination of colors by what the piece says that it wants. Sometimes I start with one thing, like this is not what I had in mind for this piece. So I dolled her up last night, and she said, oh, no, too much makeup. So we, went, we had to step back and hunt so that we could have something else. All right. Because she thought it was a little too much for her. She decided no more makeup. And when you've got a piece like this, the best thing to do is just kind of find whatever you like. Me, I kind of have an idea in mind. You saw what the other side looks like, and that's what we're going to do. Now, keep in mind, because this has dried overnight, it'll take more effort to distress it than it will if I had done it last night. Well, thank you, Sally. I appreciate that. Sometimes I feel like I talk too much. But you're in here by yourself, and I really appreciate everybody taking time to watch these videos. Because these videos take a while to prepare. Usually a 30-minute video takes you about three hours in prep. Whether it's prep or cleanup or answering questions after the fact, they take a lot of time. Okay, so now I don't know if you guys can see where you are, but these doors have, um, they're put together. Um, they're actually individual boards that have been put together. So because they have that, that construction, I want to highlight it. So we're going to go back and forth, and we're going to catch these high points in between there. And see, you can see where the high points are falling. I think I've gotten water on my sanding sponge. Let me grab another one. Hang tight, babies. All right. All righty. Sorry about that. so sweet. My husband is so used to me doing these videos now. I have not been home in hours and hours. He is very good natured about it. He knows that I love it. It's not often in life you get to, for your job, to be something that you love like I love this. how beautiful that is distressing. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love it. Now the amount of distress is totally up to you because some people don't like this much distressing but when you've got a piece that has the bones that this one does and the, the this one has all of the boxes for me. I mean this one it clicks everything for me. It has the old wood inside it. It has the construction. And if you'll notice, some of the time, 
You may want to distress in this direction and sometimes this direction. If you do this direction, you're going to catch the high points of the board so that you can see them. When you go back and forth across there. The other direction, you're going to get more of a linear effect this way. So you'll notice sometimes I go across and sometimes I go up and down. But um, typically, my last few strokes are going to be with the grain of the wood. All right, look at that. Oh my gosh. It is just a gorgeous piece. I got to tell you, if I had a place for this in my house, this would not be going in the store. We would be using it for a pop-up shop and it would be going into Pam's house because I love it that much. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Dixie Belle Paints, but if there's a Dixie Belle Paint retailer on here, um, you guys need to shout out and let everybody know where you are and because I'm telling you, your Dixie Belle retailers are an invaluable resource. They are amazeballs when it comes to helping you with everything. They'll help you estimate the amount of paint. Um, and if they can't help you, they'll reach out to somebody who can, so don't worry. I, you, I need to bring it to New Mexico, don't I? Hey guys, did you guys know that we are thinking about doing a boot camp in New Mexico in May? How about that? We got to get the details finished up next week while we're taking some time off. All right. I know you guys are getting bored with this, but we have to do this before we can do the other fun stuff, you know? You can't do the other fun stuff till you get this part of it done. So, sorry if I'm boring you, but... Has to be done. This one's got a whiteboard here. I love it when they've got something that's a little different from door to door. Awesome. All righty. We gotta get this little piece right here. All right, so you guys can see what we're doing. We are going to find us a brush and we're gonna kind of brush the dust off of here. Woo, look at all that dust. Don't brush it near your open paint if you've got it. That's usually what I do. And then I have to just chunk it. All right. Can you guys see that dust? All right. So that is what we're doing. Um, there's one more thing we're going to do right quick. We're going to drag this through here. you got to add a little bit of... You know, got to have a little fun there. Can't have that looking too nice and neat when the rest of it doesn't look nice and neat. Because then it's just janky. And that's not what we want is janky. Okay, so now can you guys see what we've done? We've darkened these panels so that they're darker than the rest of it. And we've added some texture by doing the sanding. And we've actually sanded back through the, both the base color and the white so that you get a feel for the whole thing being distressed. <laughs> Amanda, you're a glutton for punishment, girl, if you want to hear me paint, talk about paint for three days. Okay, so now this is what we've done. We're going to work on these front doors right here. And I'm going to show you. We're going to use coffee bean because it is one of my go-tos. And I had somebody asking me last night, I don't know what I did with my coffee bean brush. What the hay? There it is. Okay, so I had somebody asking me last night um, about this. This is a dog food tray. I use this as my painting palette to offload my brush. So somebody asked me that, and I wanted to let you know. So now our accent color is going to be coffee bean. So those of you who have not watched me before, you'll know what I'm doing. 
I like to get a little bit of paint on my brush. And when I say a little bit, I'm talking a little bit. And you can use a paint pixie brush, you can use a chip brush or whatever. I typically use chip brushes. And I like to go in these recesses, okay? That's where I like to start. And it doesn't show up very much, but I would rather layer it in than get a little too heavy right from the get-go. Because if you get too heavy, then you've got to drop back and pump, you've got to do something else. And it's so much easier to get just a little bit at a time and layer it in, then get too much and have to figure out what to do to cover it up, which it's not that big a deal. Do a little bit of sanding and it's fine, but it's just a lot easier to do it a little at a time than to have to worry about all that. And if you guys follow me, you know I don't worry about too much. So there's that. Okay, so I'm gonna show you in our drawer fronts up here, okay? In our drawer fronts, we're gonna, I want a little bit of the dark up here at the top because it is going to be under the knee, underneath, unless you're sitting in the floor like I am, right? And I always keep my white cloth around. If you get too much, you can blend it in, and I do like to blend it. And if you don't like it, always take your sanding sponge, which mine wanders around on me a lot, and just back over it. And now it's light again, okay? So don't stress about how much or how little you put on there. Just kind of go um, with what you feel like. Um, I like to accent the, the architecture of the piece. So I like it to have shadows around the lines. And you'll see me a lot of times when I'm doing a piece, especially if it's got a nice bright line like this or the inset on the cabinet doors, that's really what I like to do. And I mean, you know, coffee bean is one of my go-tos. Coffee bean is great for aging a piece. I mean, it just... The, the combination of the black brown with these light colors, it just gives you exactly what you need. I've had people ask me, do you always go with the grain of wood? I don't always do anything, I don't think, okay? Also guys, if you get a chance, I started a new group today. And the group is called Creative Furniture Finishes. So I would love for you guys to join in our group. You can talk about whatever type of finish you would like. Um, it is not exclusive to Dixie Belle. Of course, I'm partial to Dixie Belle because I use mainly Dixie Belle products. But I would love to see what you're doing. I have several people that I know do Junkyard Goddess paint and so I know that I would love to see what y'all are doing with that. Um, and you know, there's a lot of mediums out there. There's a lot of them that I use. So if you guys have something you want to show off, hop in the group and let's see what you got. All right. So now we're going to add a little bit more age with this. And I don't know if you can tell from where you are, but it just kind of darkens things up a little, but it doesn't overpower what you've got going on. And that's kind of what your goal is. And when you're doing the doors, you want to just let it kiss the piece. You don't want to make it so that it overpowers your colors because you've chosen light colors for a reason. Yes, Mert, I will post the link to the group. Hey, Sandy, can you post the link to our group for Mert in here? And that way you guys can look, at it, look it up. And remember, we did add a boot camp. For July, we only have two spots left. We added it today, and we've already got three spots taken. So if you guys are interested, you might want to hit it up pretty soon. Um, all that it takes is a 50% deposit to hold your spot, and the balance isn't due until March 31st. Okay, now I'm going to do this down here, even though I don't think it's showing up in the video. I can't make the screen without backing you guys up so you can't see. But I want you to see what we're doing. So now you can see how much we've kind of um, dirtied the doors up. And um, we're going to do a little bit more dirty. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do with some wax. Because even though we've kind of dirtied it up, I still want to go back in with the wax. Because um, I like the different textures on my piece. A lot of people say, should I do wax or glaze or gilding wax? And I say yes to all of it. Right now, I am using coffee bean paint to dirty this up a little. 
Uh, we are going to be using a dark wax very shortly. We're going to be using brown wax um, because even though our top is black, it has a great undertone, but I like the way the brown wax dirties this finish up better than I did the black wax because y'all know, those of you who follow me know I'm that person. I've already tried both of them to see which one I like better. And I like the way the brown dirties this up so much better. And then after you guys are gone, I'll probably pull out the grunge gray or something like that. I know me. I just like to the feel of the wax with the paint and everything. And I don't know if you guys realize, but Dixie Belle um, wax is water-based. So typically what I do with my pieces is I really like Gator Hide on my pieces. So typically I use Gator Hide on half of everything. This piece actually on the top though, I am going to use a top coat that a friend of mine sent me. She was kind enough to send me a top coat by Polyvine and we are going to put it on this piece because this is a showpiece for my pop-up shop like we discussed. All right, so you guys see what we've done with the front of this and um, it, you can see how great it looks with the top. What colors am I using? I am using Dixie Belle Savannah Mist. Coffee Bean, Stormy Seas, and Fluff in the body here. And then on the top, I used Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain in Black Magic. And um, Black Magic and Up and Smoke. Sorry, I can't talk and think at the same time. I was. I sure was saying how awesome LaDawn is. Okay, so you guys see what we have done tonight. And you'll see that sometimes you may get... Um, you may get more color than you want. Take your sanding sponge and just sand it off. I mean, it's not rocket science. Don't panic about it. It's fine. It's nothing to get upset about. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use our um, brown wax. And I don't know if you guys have ever tried Dixie Belle's wax. Can you see how creamy this stuff is? I love Dixie Belle's wax. And I'm a wax hater. I'm just got to go on the record and tell you. I am a wet wax hater extraordinaire. Um, I don't care for wax at all, but Dixie Belle's wax is not even light wax. Dixie Belle's wax is amaze balls because it goes on so smooth and so creamy. It's, it's just incredible. So if you guys haven't tried it, hit your local retailer up and say, hey guys, I need some of that creamy wax. We've got it in several different colors. It comes in black, brown, grunge gray, white, and clear. And you can even get a smaller version of the black, brown, gray, and white. The clear is the only one that doesn't come in the smaller size, so it's great. How long do my sanding sponges last me? <laughs> I don't know because uh, I have them spread out all over Kingdom Come. Um, if you were to visit my shop, which you may get to because you're coming, um, I spread them out all over Creation. I have no idea. I, I don't, I'm not real good with that kind of thing. I just leave them laying around because I'm one of those that keeps using them even after I probably should have stopped. So, I can't say. And it depends on how much I, uh, it really depends on how much I use them because I typically don't do a lot of distressing. Um, I usually do it with glazes and waxes and things like that. But I got to tell you, this piece said, hmm, I need more than what that's going to do. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but um, when you use the wax over it, it catches all of the little grooves that you've already highlighted. So um, it really is amazing. Yeah, Julie, you think you want to visit my shop? But girl, let me tell you, I am a hoarder like you can't imagine and if y'all see my shop, then when you see me on here, you're going to think, that poor girl, there is something wrong with her. Why does she keep all of this stuff? But it's good stuff. It just needs a little bit of TLC, and in some cases, it needs a lot of TLC. And, you know, what are you going to do? It's beautiful. It is a beautiful thing. Well, Okay, so now what do you guys think? Do you see the vision that I have for this piece? All right, so can you see where we started with just a boring white piece of furniture? And now the knobs and stuff that came on this piece were very dark. 
So they're going to be beautiful with our top that we lightened up. I got, sorry, I got dust up there. And now we darkened this up, and it may get a little darker. I don't know. Um, I have to see what it says to me. But we're going to go ahead and finish up this last um, side over here. If you guys want to stick around, great. If you don't, I know some of you guys can't stand the sound of my voice like me. Um, so hang around if you want to, but if you don't, I totally get it. Some people have a lot more going on than painting. I can't imagine why, but it seems that some people do have more going on than painting. All right, and also remember, when you get to finishing your piece, don't neglect these edges. Don't forget, after you've done your blend and your distressing and everything like that, especially if you're going to sell a piece. Be mindful that these edges need some type of finish. If you just want to put a base coat, if you want to distress, if you want to use wax, whatever you do, make sure that your piece has a finish. Make sure that where your drawer goes in and out, take your drawer out, and make sure that you can't see the unfinished part or the previous color um, in your piece because there's nothing that says I don't care more than somebody doing this and they still only see white. Now granted, we have some white showing on this piece, but you would be much better off if they saw a little bit of, of the Savannah Mist or the Stormy Seas or something. Exactly, we just need to bless their heart. Girl, you have no idea how many times a day I say bless their heart because some people, they need more than just to bless your heart. I gotta tell you, I would like to say more than that to them in many cases. But then I think about our service this past Sunday at church, and I remember that grace is very important, and I don't say more than that. Okay, I'm going to have to move my chubby self over here and get started on this. All right, so what did I do with my sandwich sponge? This is what I do all day. I look around for stuff that I've misplaced. Okay, so now we got to do the boring stuff again. You got to take the part off that you don't want. Make sure you're not sanding over your wax, which I constantly do. But I guess my wax is used to it because it still works. I leave it in my Jeep and let it melt and a ton of other things like that. So those of you who are signed up for boot camp, are y'all as excited about it as I am? I cannot wait for boot camp. But y'all better come in your work clothes because we are working your fannies off. We are going to have so much fun. I cannot wait to get y'all in here and get you painting. Those of you who are flying in for class, I am going to have some pieces you can work on. Um, but if you want to bring your own pieces, you're welcome to. And y'all are going to have visits from Mastiffs. My boys and girls like to be with their mama. They can't be away from me for three whole days. So y'all will probably have lots of Mastiff snuggles. And yes, my boys and girls are pretty big, but they're very, very, very gentle. Y'all will get to meet the snorer that snores in all of my videos. If I had gone home before this, she'd have been here tonight. How many of y'all saw what I posted the other day? Somebody said I was too rough with Ridley Ann in my video that I did for Dixie Bell the other day. Now, can y'all imagine me ever being rough with any of my dogs? She said that if I wanted to be that rough with her, I should just not let her be here. Like I would ever be rough with my little munchkins. I have been rescuing Mastiffs for 15 years. I live, eat, and breathe Mastiffs. Oh, you are going to love it then, Amanda, because my Amos is up probably 200, maybe 225 pounds. Isabel is about 170 pounds or so. She's the one you always hear snoring. 
And Ridley Ann is my small girl. She is only probably 125, maybe 130. So, I guess small is relative. Now, don't you love this feature of this cabinet? Oh my gosh, I love the feature of this cabinet. I just think it's so great that these doors are put together like this. I mean, I just love it. And I notice that everybody's dropping off, but you know what? When you're doing a finish, some parts of it are very tedious. You, they, you don't really see the work that goes into it because I probably could finish this cabinet if I sat and just worked on this cabinet and wasn't talking, you know, running my mouth, I could probably do this cabinet in three hours, maybe four hours, um, but probably three hours from start to finish. And part of it is tedious. Part of it is, to some people it would be boring, but to see the difference in the piece, I can't imagine somebody not thinking that this is exciting. I mean, I just, I can't. I just love to see everything about it. It's just, it's just my jam, I guess. <laughs> All right. What do you think of that? Ooh, we're losing people like crazy. This is not glamorous, I guess. <laughs> All right. Now, keep in mind, a lot of people paint the backs of their pieces, um, and it really just depends on what you're gonna do with it. The back of this piece is still the original black, and I gotta tell you, it's in great condition. It looks really good, so there's no reason to me whatsoever to go on and do anything with it because this piece is not one of those pieces that I could see used anywhere out in the center of the floor. Now, I could be wrong, but if it is, the black is very well done. It's a manufactured finish, so it was probably commercially sprayed or something. Boy, this does not want to distress too much. I think I'm wearing the sanding sponge down. All right. That, and it's hotter than you know what in here. Again. All right, so you guys can see where we are with this. Yes, this piece was black. And now we get to pull out our wax and our beautiful, I think that's wax. And I have no idea which one is which. So we're going to see which one is which. That looks like wax. But it looks like it maybe was not always wax. <laughs> So I think I got wax on my crazy uh, coffee beans. So we're gonna go to a different one. All right, so again, dog food tray offloading, and we've got to highlight our recesses because I always do that. I like the low lights. We've given all of this for the highlights, and you know, it still just needs a little bit more right here. sanding you want to have I usually keep a little this is my little dust brush I keep one of these round brushes because it's really great for keeping the dust off of what you're doing and that way you can kind of control where the dust ends up um, and actually at my shop I have a vacuum uh, system attached so that I can vacuum it up 
So it's totally up to you as to which way you want to do it. All right, so now we get to put our coffee bean on. And you can see where we ended right here, so we're going to have to do that and come around. Um, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to kind of go up underneath the top. We want our low lights up there because it's underneath the top. We're going to add it, and I told you, start slow. So just add a very light touch. Just let it kiss your piece just enough so that it catches on those high raised parts. And you, if you were here and I could show you, you would understand what I'm talking about. Um, every piece has, you know, some little raised parts in it that um, where the board sticks up or, or something like that. There's always some kind of little, um, maybe it's where the board's a little uneven or where they join together one side is raised or whatever. When you've got those pieces like that, those are perfect for catching just a little touch of color. And in that way, it kind of gives you the illusion um, uh, that it's warm there. So see up here, see how we've got these raised pieces? Well, there's a little bit of texture to that where we sand it and the paint's not exactly even. So that's where it's gonna take more paint where you sand it and it's not exactly smooth and even, it's gonna catch in those little recesses and stuff and it's gonna give you a little bit of texture. If you get too much, it's not a problem. Just take your sanding sponge and go right back over it, okay? But we're gonna go on through because we wanna finish this piece tonight. I know this piece is getting boring and um, I will clear coat it tomorrow and that way you guys will get to see the finished piece and we are finished way ahead of our deadline because our deadline is not until February. But I am not that person that wants to wait until February because what happens if I don't like this piece anymore for what I'm doing? So, all right, can you guys see how great the texture is on this now? And you can see um, it just really has a lot more personality than being just your basic white. Keep your rag around because, like right there, I don't like how much dark got right there in that little recess. So I'm just going to clean it right off with my sanding sponge and move on. Okay, so now we've got to do our door. And you know, when I did the door before, remember what I told you? It does better if you just barely let it touch the door. Just let it kiss the door and go with the grain of your wood. So we're, this one, we're going up and down. We're going vertically. If you get too much, it's real easy to correct. All right. So like this panel right here has a little bit more on it than what I want. Just take this. I'm gonna take it over these two panels. And just like that, most of it's gone. And now we're gonna go back over and just add another little brush. And there you go. You just want it to, I mean, literally, it just barely touches it. That's why I say it just is like a little butterfly kiss to it so that you can see what it looks like. All right, so now we've gotten all of the dark in our recesses. You also want to make sure, I like to drag it on these sharp edges of this inset right here because it gives it a little bit more definition if you do it that way, okay? You just want to make sure that it gives a lot of definition to your piece. And every once in a while, you have to get up and step back and look at your piece as a whole. Because um, whereas it looks great if you're looking right here, when you step back, you may decide that it looks too symmetrical. You may decide it looks too organic, too uneven, or whatever. Typically, I have a problem with it looks too symmetrical versus it looks too um, uneven because I like uneven. So I'm going to back you guys up so you can see the piece as a whole. All right, we're going to step you back, step you back, step you back. All right, so you guys can see most of the entire piece, and you get a feel for what we wanted, right? We were going for something that had more personality than just a plain white. Here, let me lift you up. You don't need to see the whole rug. There we go. All right, so... We're gonna run back over what we did right quickly. We started with a piece that had been black. 
it had been painted white. Owie, owie, owie. And it had been painted white. And we actually put um, Savannah mist over the top of that. And then in the doors, we did a blend using a Stormy Seas. And then we did some distressing. And we did dry distressing on this piece. And we went back in with coffee bean to accent it. And while you guys weren't on, I did do a little bit of accenting with some fluff. And then we went back over with brown wax. And that's all I have left to do to that end panel. But I can tell everybody's getting bored with it. So I will be coating the top of it tomorrow with my polybine, and I'll let you know how that goes because I've never used it before. And then the bottom of this piece, since it really won't get a lot of wear, I will probably use a flat top coat on it, Dixie Belle's flat top coat. Um, I may end up using polybine on the whole thing. I don't know yet. Um, so keep an eye out. I'll have before and after pictures. And I can't tell you guys how much. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in and sharing my videos and everything like that, and signing up for my boot camps. I am so excited about those. If you have questions, please hit me up on Facebook. Uh, my cell phone number's out there, and I'm happy to help any way I can. If you guys need anything shipped, tomorrow's my last day to try to ship before Christmas, so order tonight or tomorrow, and I will see you in the next couple of days. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.